boys in the paddock that's been resting for yeah, about two good months. I have had the sheep sort of lightly go over this paddock because um, they just can shoot under the electric fence so sometimes they do what they like, these sheep. Um, now these boys are getting finished at the moment so they're looking pretty good. Um, and we've got some decent length in this grass as well. It's spring here in New Zealand and uh, South Warrapa. So the grass is really starting to kick into gear. Um, and this is about the only time of year you can really push the grass a lot harder than you normally would. So this is a paddock that's a couple of days into recovery. And you can see that it's really been grazed quite hard. I do a thing called a bit of, it's called a reset. And I'd only really recommend to do it in the end of winter and uh, sort of the start of spring and the mid sort of way through spring depending on when spring really kicks into gear like for example spring was a little bit late this year down we were uh, but yeah this paddock's been resting well and these boys are looking good Have a nosy round of these um, stairs here. Uh, I'll actually be staying on. So I've established that to really graze this land how I'd like to, uh, what me and Amber would like to really practice all of the regenerative principles. And we've decided that we've probably got a bit too much cattle on the land this year because we've been feeding out a lot of hay, we fed it just under 200 bales of hay for 18 cows, 3 heifers and 15 steers and we've also leased a bit of land as well so we're, we've really been pushing it and even though we've fed the hay and leased the land we've still had to graze pretty hard in some paddocks, a lot harder than I would like personally. So this young guy that I was, we were just looking at, he is going to be staying on as well. So when I say they're going to be staying on, we've got stairs in various ages. And we've bought them like that so that we can sell them at various stages of the year. Because uh, you really just need to sell four at a time, uh, otherwise you get a penalty for transport. So this is a young steer. He's only about, well, probably uh, nine months old. He's looking real nice, so he'll, he'll stay on for another good, probably another year actually, so he'll be closer to two years old when, when he's finished. Um, so we're going to be moving nine of our steers and keeping six and keeping our three heifers. This is another young steer he'll be staying on. We'll keep our three heifers and we'll get a bull. So we're going to go from a herd of 18 cows down to a herd of um, 10 cows once we have a bull. We don't have one at the moment. Um, oh yeah, this is, this is lovely, this grass, eh? So this, like I said, this paddock's really been resting for a good two, probably even maybe three months. Um, and, you know, in the perfect world, this is what all of our paddocks would look like when we push our cows into them. But they haven't really been doing that, so that's why we want to scale down slightly. So we're almost be halving our herd, um, which is quite significant. But you've got to bear in mind that we don't um, use phosphorus, we don't use lime. We might start using some lime in some paddocks, but we haven't used lime for a year and this property's never seen lime or phosphorus or, or any nitrogen. Um, so yeah, everything's quite a bit slower than your conventional farming. The results speak for themselves. I mean, that's a beautiful heifer. Yeah, she's a big girl. She'll stay on. We haven't got any calves out of here yet, but we're going to get a nice um, registered pure bull, English bull, so 
If you know of any of those, this is a, another heifer. I'm oh, sorry about the glare. This is one of the big boys. He's uh, getting finished as well. So when I say they're getting finished, they're pretty much ready for um, butchering. Oh, sorry, mate. You might, you might have heard me. This is another steer that's getting finished as well. Now you see the old, um, he's Angus, but the other one we were just looking at was a Murray Grey. They're all crosses, they're all Frisian crosses because they're from the dairy industry. You see how he's got these little nubs? You don't get penalised um, for the horns unless they stick out past the ears. You know, so they've got to be quite big horns. Yeah, so we'll leave the cows in here for about a day, maybe two days. Like I said, we can push it a little bit harder at this time of year. And we really want to get these cows finished to a nice size before we let them go. Otherwise, it's just been a bit of a waste of time. Now, this paddock here, this has been resting now for about oh, a good week, maybe even two weeks, probably somewhere in between perhaps but um, as you can see it's still pretty short so you can see sort of how hard we've had to push it but we really only have so much land and we've had to use it wisely and now we'll rest it until it's got a really nice um, thick um, cover on there you know like good good cover get it nice and high, something something along these lines, and then we'll graze it off, but it's really going to bounce back hard, because it's spring now, so it won't take long, and that paddock, that'll be she hot, and it'll be the same with this paddock, over here, it was actually really wet when we were grazing these paddocks, so I opened them up and sort of spread the load across the two paddocks. And it worked quite effectively. You can see, like, they have had to transit through this gap here, but this bugger all pugging. Because usually what would happen if you, if it's wet and they run out of grass, they end up just hanging out here waiting for the next paddock. And this area turns to mud, so... Yeah, it spread the load, and they didn't really know what the hell was going on. And it worked quite well. Um... But then this is a good example of sort of how hard we've had to push it. Now this is pretty short, so I'm not really proud of this as a wannabe regenerative grazer, but... Yeah, she's pretty short, but it's not like it's going to be a sudden drought or anything, because we're only at the start of spring, and New Zealand is actually a very wet country, so we're going to have lots of grass soon enough, and it'll bounce back. And it'll look, it'll look like uh, that grass in the background there. Alright, anyway, your ears are probably bleeding, so I'll better go and have some breakfast. You all have a lovely day.